Welcome to our final midweek connect of this little series we've been doing on the emblems of Easter. My name is Garrett. I'm one of the ministers here at Norwin Christian Church, and I'm excited to, to dive into this final emblem with you. So far, we've been looking at different details, different things that happened within the story, within the narrative leading up to Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection. We looked first at the, the soldier who was trying to take Jesus and, and the sword in the ear that occurred where one of Jesus' disciples, probably Peter, cut off the ear of, of someone trying to take Jesus. And then we looked at the flogging that Jesus went through, the physical suffering and, and, and the whips that, that, that took the flesh off of Jesus' body um, leading up to his crucifixion. After that, Jeff went through the vinegar sponge, the sour wine and the hyssop branch that was extended to Jesus as he was thirsty upon the cross. Today, we're going to be looking at an emblem that takes place following Jesus' death and is really a centerpiece of our faith, a centerpiece meaning the resurrected body and life of Jesus, the resurrection which allows for our resurrection and the eternal glory and presence of God. And so we're, we're looking, as we've been doing this, we've, we've kind of realized, I hope that you've realized, that there are so many significant, even though they might seem small, there's so many details in Scripture, in the Gospel, in the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, that we can sometimes miss or, or look over. And, and this is true not just with the, the gospel, not just with Jesus' death and resurrection, but within every aspect and every story within Scripture. There are many small details that we tend to miss, maybe because we're rushing to get to the main idea, or, or we're kind of looking at the central theme, and we're missing some of these smaller things that take place. And so, by zeroing in on these small details, we can find a lot of theological and important truths that, that evoke a lot of emotional responses from us. And so today we're looking at a, a specific part, a specific uh, narrative within the gospel. John chapter 20 verses 3 through 8 is where we're going to be. And we're seeing the resurrection through the lens of John and Peter. Now, leading up to this, what's happened is that Mary and, and other women who had followed Jesus had gone to the tomb the day after Sabbath because you weren't permitted to be around a dead body on the Sabbath. So Jesus would have died on a Friday and he would have died before the sun went down, which meant that he died prior to Sabbath. But as soon as that the sun went down and the moves the, the moon rose in the sky, it was Sabbath, which meant that there were restrictions on what you could do during the day, what you could do as you were celebrating Sabbath, and the women who would have gone and prepared the body, who would have put spices on the body, who would have ensured that everything was wrapped and, and done the way it needed to, to be. They wouldn't have been able to do that on Saturday, so they went early in the morning on Sunday. As soon as Sabbath is over, as soon as the sun rose or the moon set, they went to do this. And lo and behold, what did they find? The tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away. There was linen cloths lying on the ground. And so Mary went back and told the disciples. And so that's where we pick up here in verse 3. It says, At that, Peter and the other disciple went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. So, remember we said details are important. Small details, things that we might miss. And, and one of the coolest details in this is that John tells us that he outran Peter. It's like, it's like a low-key brag that he's saying, listen, I'm faster than Peter. You guys think Peter's so cool. I, I'm faster than him. It's like little kids running a race. You, you beat them at recess and now the whole school has to know that you're faster than such and such. So John is telling us that he's faster than Peter, but that's not even the most significant little detail here. The most significant detail is the fact that they ran. You see, in first century 
Palestine, a, a Palestinian man, it would have been undignified to run. It, it, Jesus gives the parable of the prodigal son, and the father runs out to meet the son when he returns. Now, the undignified nature of the father accepting the son, it, it wasn't just that he accepted the son, it was that he ran. He full on sprinted to the sun. That's undignified. A grown man in Palestine doesn't run. They walk. They're dignified. They, they're calm. <laughs> Not Peter and John. At the first sound that something might have happened to Jesus' body, you know, it's likely at this point it wasn't even running through their mind that Jesus had resurrected from the dead. They were just afraid something had happened to Jesus' body. And as soon as they hear that, they take off. They sprint. They run to the tomb. They don't walk come calmly. They're undignified in their response of this news. But then what happens? John outruns Peter, so he gets to the tomb first. And then it says in verse 5, Stooping down, John saw the linen cloths lying there. But he didn't go in. And so that's another important detail that sometimes we might look over. John sprints to the tomb. He's willing to be undignified at this news of Jesus. But as soon as he gets there, he pauses. He waits. There's some trepidation. There's some caution. There's possibly fear. What does this tell us? Well, it tells us that as John was running there, he was going through all the possibilities of what might happen in his head. And he's probably hoping that that stone is still there, that Mary just uh, missaw something in the early hours of the morning, but he gets there and the tomb is open. The, the, it's, it's open and there's linen cloths lying on the ground and he stops. Because in his head, one of three things has happened. Either someone has stolen Jesus' body, which is sacrilegious, which is just an abomination, an abominable, abominable thing to have done. Or Jesus was ripped open or taken away by some wild animal. Or maybe Jesus had just disappeared. It's happened to holy men in the past, right? Elijah, Enoch. John didn't know what to think. He was cautious, and, and he gets to the tomb, and he realized something had happened, but he's He's cautious. He doesn't want to go in yet. He doesn't want to face what might have happened. But that doesn't stop Peter. You know, Peter's the brazen guy that's willing to go out and walk on water. He's bold. He makes bold statements all the time. Why not just rush headfirst into the tomb? And so Peter rushes into the tomb, and it says in verse 6, Then following him, Simon Peter also came. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The wrapping that had been on the on Jesus' head was not lying with the other linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. And that's a significant point. That's the emblem that we're looking at right now. But the other two details also tie into here. Because here's what's going on. Peter and John sprint to the tomb because they're fearful that someone did something with Jesus' body. They're willing to be undignified because they don't want anything to have disrupted this place. But also in the back of their minds, they're thinking, what if, what if he's not dead? What if something has happened? What if, what if God did something here? And John gets there and he realizes something did happen. But <laughs> he's, he's cautious. Because what if... Jesus didn't resurrect. What if someone stole the body? What if a wild animal got in here? And then Peter goes in and John follows suit and they realize Jesus is alive. Now what makes them realize this? It's the fact that the linen cloths are all still there and that the cloth that was covering Jesus' face, it's folded in a separate place. Because if Jesus' body had been taken, the linen cloths wouldn't be there. A, a Jewish person would not have taken the body of Jesus and unwrapped that body and then carried him out. They would have carried him out with the linen coverings. Because it's already sacrilegious to touch a dead body, let alone the flesh of one. Now, Jesus' linens wouldn't have been left. They would have been gone with the body. If a wild animal had gone there, the linens would have been torn to shreds not folded up neatly. If Jesus had just evaporated, 
then the linens would all be lying in the same exact place that Jesus was. But what do we see? The linens are lying on the, the, lying on the ground, and the face covering is folded up in a separate place. What this means is that Jesus, his body, had regained breath. That after these three days of lying there, Jesus just got up. And he got up, he took the face covering off, he folded it, he set it aside, he let the other linens fall off to the ground, he moved the stone, and he walked out of the grave. John and Peter see the linen cloths, and they know what had happened. Jesus, the Son of God, had rose from death. And now he calls us to do the same. And that's, that's what we celebrated this past Sunday on Resurrection Sunday. We celebrated Jesus' resurrection, but we also celebrate the fact that now that he's resurrected, he asks us to follow suit, to accept his atoning death, to accept what he did on the cross, so that like his resurrection, we will resurrect. We will forever be in the presence of God of God. So as we've come to a conclusion on the emblems of Easter, I hope that, that you reflect on this as well, that you reflect on what the linen cloths mean as they lay there in a pole on the floor and the face covering folded to the side that Jesus got up. And he calls us to do the same. He promises us an eternity with him in his presence forever because of his resurrection. Thank you for joining alongside us as we've looked at these emblems of Easter. And I look forward to worshiping with you this coming Sunday. Have a good rest of your week.